Ahoy there, ladies and gents. It is I, Jake the Ashen Hollow, and I hope you're all doing swell today. In this video, we're going to cover the story of the two Kareem natives, Egon and Arena. Far below the undead settlement, through sewers and graves, we find the young maiden Arena locked inside a small cell. Uh, who is there? Is someone there? Anyone? Oh. Please, whoever you are, touch me. The dark surrounds me, nibbles at my flesh. Little creatures, they never stop biting. So please, hold out your hand and touch me. These little creatures are humanities. Arena tried and failed to become a firekeeper for unknown reasons. We know from Dark Souls 1 that a firekeeper's soul is a draw for humanity, and held within their bosoms below just a thin layer of skin are swarms of humanity that writhe and squirm. But there is much more to this story. Outside of Irina's cell is her companion Egon, a knight of Kareem. Through the game, this dude's a real hard ass and completely standoffish. He speaks about how he doesn't really care about the girl, but agrees to ally with you for as long as you assure her safety. According to the description on Morn's armor, which is equipped by Egon, it says, A Kareem knight will dedicate an entire career to attending a single maiden, just as Morn once served one goddess alone. So let's briefly look a little more into this Morn character. Morn's Great Hammer reads, Great Hammer bestowed upon Kareem knights who demonstrate outstanding strength and unwavering faith decorated by a ward of Kareem Temple and imbued with the twisted rage of Apostle Morn. So the weapon is imbued with the rage of Morn. I think we can slightly see this rage in Egon's personality. Furthermore, Morn's ring says, a malformed ring given to Knights of Kareem. Morn served the goddess Katha and later became an apostle of the Archbishop. They labored together to provide comfort to the sufferer. So what we know about Morn is basically that he served Katha alone, and the Order of Knights of Kareem have followed in that tradition of serving a single maiden. Katha, we know, is the Goddess of Tears, Katha being first introduced to us as a goddess in Dark Souls 2. So let's read the description of Katha's chime from Dark Souls 2. It says, Sacred chime blessed by Katha, Goddess of Tears. Katha, the goddess of tears, is known as a compassionate being that is with us in times of tragedy. But, some believe that she is a demoness that guides us towards misfortune. This is where things get a little interesting to me. The last part sheds a completely different light on this goddess. Perhaps she is a demoness that guides us to misfortune. Let's look at that concept in contrast with what we learn in Dark Souls 3. From the description on Morn's armor, it says, Modeled on Morn, the Archbishop's Apostle, the helm is a perfect likeness to the stone heads lining the cathedral. Modeled on seems specifically different than worn by to me, so it gives me the impression that we're inclined to believe that Morn looks like how this armor appears. Looking at the helmet, it looks an awful lot like Hillary Clinton, so we know it's a representation of the demonic. Shit, I broke the no politics rule. Let me get a retake. That helmet certainly looks demon-esque to me. Let's read the description for Kate Chime from Dark Souls 3 now. It says, Sacred Chime blessed by Katha, goddess of tears. Rare even amongst Kareem clerics. Affected by intelligence, a rare thing for miracle catalysts, and also agreeable with miracles that lean towards the dark. Its existence is concealed in the name of the Archbishop, as it is an anathema. Anathema meaning someone or something that is very strongly disliked. So what I get from this is, a goddess who might possibly be a demon is served by her apostle who happens to look like a demon too, and the chime she blesses increases their dark damage. All that says fishy to me, and all that seems indicative to the testament that Katha is a demon herself. Not that demons and dark souls are necessarily evil in and of themselves. We know An Orlando used the help of demons to transport the chosen undead to and from Sin's fortress. I think it's easy to assume this was through the way of white. They appear to be the predominant church and religion in the Dark Souls universe, 
so I don't think it's far off to think that Kareem is following the same or similar teachings of the Way of White, especially after considering the Braille Divine Tome of Kareem, which says, A sacred Braille Tome from Kareem filled with advanced miracles. In the Way of White, there is a tradition of placing great faith in the words of the blind, and Braille Tomes are not unusual. But, this video isn't so much about getting into all the churches and religions into Dark Souls. That is for a later time. The reason I want to bring in ties to the Way of White is to relate it to the linking of the fire and the desire to always continue the Age of Fire. Here in the Undead Settlement, we see Egon with his maiden Irina who was to become a firekeeper. Now we don't know all of the tales of the Knights of Kareem and each of their maidens, but I believe it likely that they were all set out to become firekeepers, to keep tending the flame throughout all the continuations of the Age of Fire. But there is something different about Arena. She failed to become a firekeeper. I think that's the first time we've seen something like that. How does one fail to become a firekeeper? We are never given a specific answer, but Arena does tell us that she came to this land to become a firekeeper and mentions that your touch freed her from the dark. Which, if a firekeeper's soul is a draw for humanity or dark, that would seem like a good thing, at least in terms of trying to become a firekeeper. Then she says that she is weak and unfit to tend the flames, which is incredibly vague. It to me anyways, kind of sounds like an excuse or beating around the bush. Anyways, it is uncertain to if she came to this conclusion on her own, or if it was something she was told and simply accepted as truth. There are two outcomes to Arena's story we can witness, a dark path and a light path. I won't go into detail on how to complete each of these quest lines, because I'm not here to hold your hand through the game. I'm just, I'm just kidding, I freaking love you guys, but I've already digressed enough for this video, so go look up a guide. The Dark Path is initiated by giving Arena a Dark Miracle Tome, and purchasing a Dark Miracle from her will cause Egon to attempt to take her away from you. The two from Kareem can then be found by the Udix Gundir bonfire. Upon following after them, Egon will be hostile and you will be forced to kill him. After killing him and having already reintroduced the dark back into Arena's life, she becomes a lost version of herself again, calling out if anyone is there. Oh, someone, please touch me. The dark surrounds me, nibbles at my flesh. Little creatures, they never stop biting. So please out your hand and touch me. You have the option to reach out and touch her, but doing so will amount to nothing. She feels not your touch and pleads for someone to touch her and to keep the things from eating away at her. However, after Egon is out of the picture, the armor he donned is purchasable from the Shrine Handmaiden. Choosing to touch Irina while having Egon's gauntlets on will trigger her dark ending. Oh, you again. Touch me one last time, and kill me as you promised you would. Oh, oh, a knight of Karim is always true to his word. So here is what I think the deal with Egon is. I think he's not who he's supposed to be, but in a good way. He plays the tough guy card the whole time, but he cares for Irina a great deal. So much so that he would rather convince her that she's too weak to become a firekeeper to keep her from the corruption and hardships that come with it. Now I'm not saying he went about this the right way. I mean he did lock her ass in a cage. But this is a knight of Kareen. They are tested in their mettle, they are resilient, they are strong and unwavering in their faith. To stray from a mission would be a thing unheard of in reference to knights of Kareen especially considering what could be going on behind the scenes. The manipulation and twisting of a maybe demon goddess and her demon appearing apostle? That reeks of some sort of deception to me, more so when we think of the lengths people have gone to manipulate others into extending the age of fire time and time and time again. So I believe that he is trying his best to protect her, and for someone like him I think it would take an awful lot just to do so. 
but perhaps that is just who Egon is, even though he hides it behind a very Donald Trump-esque attitude. Damn it. Broke the politics rule again. I really just need to build a wall around that. A very large wall. And have Mexico pay for it. Okay, okay. I'm done for real this time. Anyways, I think under all that hard skin, Egon is just a giant teddy bear. More as a testament to that is the moaning shield he carries, and its description reads, A deformed great shield given to Egon of Karim upon being conferred knighthood. The giant woman's face that protects Egon is that of his sister, some years his senior. Skill, moan, offer a gentle prayer to the shield, causing the woman's face to give out a low moan and attract enemies. So we know Egon carries a memento of his sister, which is already like, Oh, that's so sweet. What's more is the skill this shield provides to attract all enemies to Egon, which seems to be indicative that he's very protective of others, or at least of Irina. Perhaps it could be in reference to Egon's sister looking out for him when they were younger, since she was older than him, and that could be where his principles came from. That's a slight rabbit trail, I know, but you guys know me. I like looking super deep. So the light path for Arena is different. Obviously. In this story arc, she actually becomes a Firekeeper and takes up residence in the Tower of the Dead Firekeepers in Firelink Shrine. When this happens, Egon disappears, and we can buy his armor from the Shrine Handmaiden, and we can also go to the location we first met Arena and find his hammer and shield. I think this could indicate two things. I think at first glance it could be that he considered his duty fulfilled, and thus his career complete. His armor description did state that Kareem Knights will dedicate their entire career to a single maiden, but I don't think that is the case. His shield, with the face of his sister, seems to be more of an heirloom that was passed unto him when he ascended into knighthood. I don't think he would leave that along with his career, rather I think this move shows his true care for Arena. He trusts the unkindled now. He feared for her becoming a firekeeper and the corruption and agony that would come with it, but perhaps treating Arena with kindness shows him that it doesn't have to be seen as a curse, that the Chosen Ash is looking out for her best interest and unknowingly did a better job than he ever could. So he leaves. He knows she's in better hands, so he forsakes his duty and goes, which would be a pretty huge thing. Did I mention how dedicated Kareem Knights are already? You've probably heard the expressions, it's not you, it's me. And if you love someone, let them go, right? That's basically the moral of the story, in my opinion. Long story short. There's also one more interesting thing I want to draw your attention to, and that is Arena's Ashes, which read, Arena was a frail woman, this frailty led to her becoming a saint of Kareem, and to her grand treachery. So Arena had a grand treachery? Could she and Egon have both decided to shirk off this journey of becoming a Firekeeper? Or was becoming a Firekeeper her treachery? Let me know what you guys think in the comments. Thank you everyone for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Until next time. Even a broken woman deserves a dignity. Arena.